Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at a simple digital logic circuit. And the digital logic IC that I'm going to use is the CD4001, which is a quad 2 input NOR gate, which you can see on my breadboard. And they're very inexpensive. You can get them online for about 50 cents. So there'll be no microcontroller, there'll be no code. Now, normally when I build a digital logic circuit, I like to solve a problem or do something useful and make it relatable. So I'm going to relate this circuit to the turn signal logic, which could be on a car or a motorcycle. And you can see I have four LEDs on my board. These are my front LEDs, and these are my rear LEDs. So this would be my left front, this is my right front, this is my left rear, this is my right rear, this is my blinkers. So I could activate the blinkers with my toggle switch, so I could turn right. And you can see my right blinkers are on, front and back. I could turn it off. I can blink left. You can see there's my left blinkers, front and rear. I can turn it off. Now this switch here is my four-way flash. You can see it's blinking all four. And it has priority over my blinker switch, so whatever I do here, there's no change. The four-way flash has priority. I can turn it off. So it's a very simple circuit using one IC, very inexpensive. So next we'll have a look at the schematic. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my turn signal circuit which I built on my breadboard and you can see the four NOR gates and if you look at the NOR gate truth table you can see how they function here's my left right selector switch that's my toggle switch here's my four way flasher switch and here's our two drive outputs our left and our right so this left will drive the left bulbs and this right bus will drive the right bulbs and I have LEDs on each of the legs to display which one is active so the hardest circuit is this RC oscillator which consists of two NOR gates. Now the inputs are connected together so they're configured as inverters. So the oscillator will oscillate at a certain frequency determined by this formula, determined by the R and C values. So with an R value of 680K and a C value of 0.68 microfarads, we'll get an output frequency of one hertz. Now that one hertz signal is fed into the input of these NOR gates. Now one thing about this RC oscillator, a lot of students make a mistake and they think this bus here is ground but it's just a tie point for these three components. Ground is actually pin 7 on the chip. So we have one hertz signal fed into one of the pins of each of the NOR gates and the other pin, pin 9 and pin 13, are pulled high by pull-up resistors which disable the frequency, the, the flasher frequency from getting into the left or right output drives. But if we ground pin 9 then it will enable the flashing frequency to go out the left to drive the left bulbs and if we ground pin 13 that enables the flashing clock to drive the right bulbs. And we do that with our left-right switch. So in the left position, it grounds pin 9. And in the right position, it grounds pin 13. And it gates the flashing clock to the left or right outputs. Now for the four-way, we switch that on. And it pulls both of them low. It pulls pin 9 and 13 low, which enables the clock circuit to go through the gates to drive the left and right. So we'll have a four-way flash. Now the RC oscillator that gives us our flashing rate is always running. And you can see that with a logic probe. See, it's indicating it's running even, even though there's no output because we're not gating the NOR gates with any of our switches. Now if I turn on the four-way, you can see it syncs to the clock. But the capacitor that's used in the RC oscillator, this capacitor here, has to be a non-polarized capacitor because, because when it's switching, current is flow, flowing e either way. So we need a non-polarized capacitor. And to understand that a little bit further, we'll have a closer look at that RC oscillator. Okay, let's have a closer look at the RC oscillator I use for my flasher circuit. So this is the circuit I'm using here. And you'll also see it drawn without the one mega ohm resistor, like this circuit here. So it's basically the same oscillator. So this one will oscillate at a higher frequency. You can see the formula is different than this circuitry here. Now a lot of students make a mistake. They think this bus here is a ground bus, but it's actually a tie point for these three components. The ground is actually pin 7 of the chip. So the output is taken from the output of this gate and ground, which is pin 7 of the chip. Now this oscillator is only good for low frequency applications, because when you get into the higher frequencies, this capacitor becomes very small, and startup becomes unreliable. 
So if you want a high frequency RC oscillator, I would go into a ring oscillator like this here, where you have an odd amount of inverters. So with the propagation delay, it's like a dog catching his tail. This one will always start. Now also this capacitor should be a non-polarized capacitor because when it's oscillating, uh, the polarities are going to change. Okay, let's check out the operation of this RC oscillator. So we'll start out with this point being high, so this point will be low. So we'll have 8 volts on top of the resistor. We'll have ground on this side of the capacitor, so we'll have a series RC circuit. So now this capacitor will start charging up through the resistor until this point here hits half VCC or 4 volts. That's the threshold of this gate. So when we have 4 volts across this capacitor, 4 volts will be fed into the input of this gate. Now this gate's going to change. So we're going to have we're going to have a low here now and have a high here. So now this point is going to be 8 volts plus the 4 volts that's charged up with the capacitor. We're going to have 12 volts on this side of the capacitor. This point is ground now, so now it's going to start discharging the capacitor through the resistor. Now the voltage is going to start coming down until it goes below 4 volts, and this is going to go high again. So it's going to alternate between those two states. So this point here, we're going to have voltages higher than VCC, than 8 volts, and lower than ground. So it's going to turn on the input protection diodes of this gate. So at this point here, we're going to see a clamping voltage of 8 volts and ground. So that's why we put this resistor in here. So with this resistor in here, it's not enough current to turn on the, the input protection diodes of this, of this gate. So at this point here, we'll actually see the voltage go above VCC and below ground. So that's why we're using this, this resistor to keep the input protection diodes from turning on. So what that does, the output frequency will not change with variation of power supply voltage. So that kind of isolates uh, the input protection diodes uh, from the oscillation of the circuit. So this is the circuit that I used. It's a little bit better circuit than, than the one on the left, a little bit more isolation. So that's what I'm using in my flasher circuit. Okay, so now you know how this turn signal circuit works. Now I've been driving the LEDs directly from the chip, but you could use a MOSFET to drive the left bulbs and the right bulbs. And the switches switch to ground, so they switch the chassis ground on a motorcycle, and there's very little current going through the switches, so they're totally isolated from the bulb current. So there's no thermal flashers, there's no moving parts, it's all solid state, very in inexpensive to build. Now I've made other videos on how to control the brake light and tail light of a motorcycle using PWM, and to control the headlight high beam, and now the turn signal circuit. So with all these logic circuits, all the logical functions available on these chips, now you could get into one chip into the CPLD, so it will be a one chip solution. You just mount that on your own custom circuit board with your connectors and you could have your own uh, circuit built on the CPLD. So this video is the last of the videos and it's a little introduction on how you could get into CPLDs.